most common sign is going to be a headache. Um, but, but honestly, in addition to headache, we'll see a lot of visual complaints, uh, people feeling almost dizzy, especially if things are moving quickly around them. So some people think you just have to get a hit in the head to get a concussion, which most of what we see is some type of trauma or accident hit to the head, but you can get a, a shot to the body and the forces that move your neck to your head can also cause concussion. So usually um, there is a, some sort of contact that's uh, that it's a contact injury. The patient will come with a typical story of either they're playing a certain game or um, they were doing something and accidentally hit up against a wall or something like that. And then uh, the biggest complaint is generally a headache um, that either will or won't go away. Um, and then along with that are just a variety of symptoms. It can range from confusion to dizziness, pain with bright lights or with loud noises that don't seem to go away or get worse if that stimulus is still there. We have the concerns about youth football and concussions, and you get some really high-level guys like Robert Cantu, who's the chief neurosurgeon for the NFL, who says, I wouldn't have my kid play peewee football. And I got to admit, there's some pros and cons of it. I would say this, though. You, you get concerned and you need extra rest for a young, a young one who has had a concussion, but the incidence of concussions where serious orthopedic injuries is so much less in peewee football than it is in middle school. And it gets higher in high school. And it's all the more high in college and the pros. Even as fit and strong and massive as these guys are, it's Newtonian physics. They're bigger, they're stronger, but they're also faster. That means they're colliding with guys that are just as big, strong, and fast. And it almost gets to like car crash scenario, the better they are. Um, so the actual injury incidence is actually low at a, as, at a young age. But if, if you got a young man and he's had concussions in peewee football and now he's getting some in high school, you gotta be a little concerned. You gotta be a little concerned. You'll get, you'll get some audio complaints that uh, uh, loud noises really bother them. And what you'll find out from their family and friends is the noises aren't even that loud and it's bothering them. Um, along with the visual complaints about feeling dizzy if things are moving around too quickly, uh, we'll have a lot of concentration issues. So I'm having trouble concentrating, concentrating for a long period of time. They will tend to have more trouble with screens when it comes to concentration. So a phone screen, a, a screen of a pad, even the screen of their computer um, is almost uh, too much for them. So the interesting part about concussions nowadays is that we don't label them as mild, moderate, or severe concussions. It's either you you get a concussion, you've got one, and you get diagnosed with one, and you've got one. And so we don't really label them anymore because every concussion, even a concussion, if somebody's had more than one, every single one of them is different. Out of the thousands of, that I've seen, none of them are exactly the same, not even the same person. Usually, so par parents and coaches have to be aware that it doesn't just need a hit in the head. What you're looking for is symptoms. What you're looking for is that that, that athlete doesn't feel quite right. Um, they get, after a play, after they fall, something happens, and they're saying, okay, I'm, I'm a little dizzy. I have a little bit of a headache, fogginess, those type of things. Any, I mean, there's a slew of symptoms. Light sensitivity, you know, sensitivity to noise, and the list goes on and on about what those symptoms are. And with those symptoms, you have to be able to, one, educate your athlete. That's the hard part. You talk about youth and kids, and then they really, I mean, they had a headache before. They might have a sinus headache. They live in San Antonio. Allergies are everywhere. So they're used to maybe having a little bit, but they can push through it. But it doesn't happen after a certain incident. And so in some of these symptoms, they can show up 24 hours after. Because you have adrenaline, right? And so you kind of ignore, you didn't quite feel it. I mean, pain tolerances, they're in the zone for that game. And then it's after the game. It might be the next day that they start to go, you know, I don't feel quite right. Something's wrong. I'll generally do my assessment, um, check things like their eye movement and their balance, check their memory, um, and then 
sit them out for a little bit. I'll, I'll have them sit in, the, sit in the stands. I'll come and check in on them every few minutes and ask them how they're doing. Um, if just being in the environment that we're in is triggering those uh, symptoms to get worse, like the noise of either the players that are cheering or the audience that might be cheering or even the music that they play whenever there's a timeout, if that starts to irritate them, that makes my suspicions a little bit higher for a concussion. It's very rare that we have to shut an athlete down, but too many concussions or protracted symptoms with concussions that are getting more and more noticeable called post-concussion syndrome. It's not the permanent problem necessarily that's chronic traumatic encephalopathy is. There was a Will Smith movie about that, CTE or quote concussion, but it's still a concern and it can be a functional lifelong causer of headaches. They may still be sharp as attack and examples of athletes that had to shut down from their career but are still doing high-level things, Troy Aikman, Steve Young, sharp as attack these guys. But there's a if you get too many and you're getting protracted symptoms, you have to be a little concerned. So how how likely is an athlete to have those injuries? Probably unlikely, but if one seems to have a tendency and a susceptibility to having concussions at a very young young age, a young entrance into football or entrance into sports, and those concussions become more and more frequent, that's a big concern. That's a big concern. Um, is the main risk factor for having another concussion is having a first concussion to begin with. There's a little susceptibility that happens there. There's kind of like a, a saying, if it's happened before, it may happen again. Um, and so concussions are one of those things that we need to be careful with because if a student has had a concussion, they're probably in a sport that has a higher risk for contact injury in the first place. Um, so they're at higher risk of having a, another concussion in the future. So it's a lot of education with the patients or with the athletes um, to make sure that they know what the signs are to look out for uh, in case they start having symptoms after an impact. Um, and then we also kind of warn them that there doesn't necessarily need to be an impact injury. Um, it can be uh, something as simple as like in a football game, if somebody gets tackled, their head does not um, hit up against another head or another body, um, but they almost have that whiplash type of movement. That alone can cause symptoms and, and cause a concussion because there's still a jarring of the brain kind of inside the skull. Um, so it's a lot of patient education, a lot of kind of letting them know what we know so that they can better protect themselves. So for years we used to think that a concussion was a brain bruise or some kind of physical trauma to the brain where there was some physical damage. Uh, what we've learned, at least our understanding now, is a concussion is not structural damage to the brain. We reserve that for a different category known as TBI or traumatic brain injury. In TBI, you can have some brain damage. A concussion uh, is an injury to the, to the brain that doesn't require impact. So it can be that you're spun around real fast and the rotational forces cause it, where it changes the way that part of your brain works. There's not a complete uh, answer to say, this is what a concussion is. I think once we have that answer, we'll figure out how to diagnose it better and uh, how to um, treat it better, treat it more efficiently, get you on the proper uh, rehab or medication or supplements to help you heal. But right now, there's a lot of thinking that it at least means a change in metabolism in the brain, the way our brain processes sugar, glucose, oxygen, calcium, potassium, and, and sodium, uh, that that changes. And you, when you feel normal again, all those uh, metabolic processes have gone back to normal. There's also something called a vestibular concussion or a concussion that affects your inner ear or balance center. Those kind of concussions really change our treatment. Certain short-term medications, certain supplements can help you uh, heal quicker, feel better quicker without masking your symptoms. Uh, there is such a thing as vestibular rehab, where just like we would with somebody that has bad vertigo, we do actual physical therapy to help resolve your symptoms, get you back in the classroom quicker, and then get you back in school quicker. If it's somebody who's uh, never had a concussion before uh, and they have a, a fairly mild to moderate head injury, um, I like to give them the estimate of one to two weeks um, for recovery uh, with the one caveat that there are some people that take longer to recover and it's not bad or good when that happens. It's just it's just you. It's just the individual. Um, there's nothing that we can do to fully predict. Um, but I usually err on the side of caution and rest them for a week, reevaluate them 
after that week of rest and, and recovery. Um, and if symptoms are improving, then we start getting them back into, uh, at least in this case, back into academics. So I have them uh, go participate in classes again. If they have a full day of class without any symptoms popping up and they feel great, then I progress them to some light exercise. And as long as that um, also does not provoke any symptoms, then we just continue something called a return to play protocol um, that the trainers have, where they'll continue to increase their activity until they're kind of back to where they, what they were doing before and as long as there's no symptoms, then we know that they fully recovered. Something that I also mentioned to the athletes, um, if it's not their first concussion and they've had one in the past, recovery time, for the most part, takes a little bit longer. So rather than that week of recovery, it may take either double the time or longer than that, just right off the bat. So that's another reason I try to educate them as much as I can that if you've had a concussion before, we definitely want to prevent one from happening again because the recovery period will likely be just as long or if not longer than the prior one.